Stanley Square. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm going over here. Now. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look what happens when you say you've got famous guest speakers from Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last time it was, it was me and Julie, and that was it. Nobody else ever. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome. It is really, really lovely to see so many of you turning up to tonight. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> December last year, yeah. when I went to give a talk at um, what's called a Jack meeting. The three, the way that the three principles are talked about um, in Birmingham, where I went to talk, it's called Jack. Just a thought, okay? Because we talk a lot about thought. Um, and Lee turned up to that meeting, and I met this man who was looked very, very small. He was shaking. He looked very, very scared. Just like now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a talk, though. I know, I know. It's a powerful one. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got to know each other a little bit since then, haven't we? Yeah. And um, this is his lovely friend, Hello. And um, they asked to come down and visit me. And I thought it would be really, really brilliant for you to kind of hear a little bit of Lee and Helen's story, anything you want to share or anything like that. It might be nice. Um, and we'll just see where it goes from there. Is that okay? And Absolutely. Helen, please jump in, do whatever, say whatever. Yeah. He's tall, yeah. He's what? He's tall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a record. <laughs> we have got some total newbies here tonight who haven't particularly heard much about the principles or anything like that. But Can I ask who's new? Who is, who's new to this, yeah? I've already been one. Not yeah. you. <laughs> Lee is not new, he's <laughs> 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 Um, well, um, my name's Lee. Thank you for letting me uh, speak and, and be here. Um, my my journey probably started approximately thirteen months ago, um, and my, my my journey into the three principles. Uh, started from as, as recently as December, December last year. It was completely new to me, uh, the understanding, the thinking, the whole, the whole aspect of that. Uh, brand new, what's, what's this, what's that, what's this. So if it's okay with yourselves, I'll, I'll share my, my journey, uh, which involves Helen. Um, and the ups and downs of that journey and, and, and the effect that <clears throat> just a thought has had on my life, the impact on Helen's life, my behaviour and my thinking before and after um, and my relationship with the three principles which also is now a day to day impact on my life. And, and our life and our, our relationship together. Um, there are two statements that I would like to say right now from the start before, before I carry on. One, I went on a retreat. Uh, I've been on two retreats with Deborah. Uh, the first one, um, I had the, the journey down with, with a, a lady called uh, Gemma Lee and we discussed the statement that this is life changing and what a powerful statement that is. Um, I, can, I can stand here and look everybody in the eye that that first retreat for me when <clears throat> I, I probably had my first realisation, insight, which, whichever way you look at it, changed my life. Full stop. Um, and and that's been the impact that, that's had on our relationship. And the second thing I'd like to say, categorically, without question, <clears throat> I wouldn't be in a relationship with this wonderful lady if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for people like this wonderful lady showing me the door that I had to walk through from my own understanding of, 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 of what, what this is about and where, it's, where it can take you. 
Um, <clears throat> I love the idea as a little kid I used to believe in magic and all those wonderful things that are associated with magic and in the opposite direction black magic and all, all the, 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 the evil, the good and the evil. <clears throat> what this understanding has taught me is there is real magic and you don't have to look any further than yourself. It's inside. It's inside each and every one of you. And you may not see that now, or you may not feel that now, but it is, without question. I, I was, um, I was um, a typical, typical young man. Uh, of going out, enjoying the good life, enjoying uh, partying, enjoying alcohol, enjoying drugs, um, which is so innocent all those years back. You know, I'm 51 years old. Um, as my life progressed, um, a lot of what became the conditioning, the normal uh, in my circle. Uh, and in my world was um, alcohol, you work hard, you play hard, I'm sure you've heard that statement before, um, and you know, you've, you've worked hard all week, I'm entitled to this. <clears throat> now that, that, that in itself it, is an individual choice and I'm not here to, to, to talk about uh, individual preferences and choices and what people enjoy but it's when that enjoyment stops and you go to the next stage where it becomes um, problem problematic it becomes things things that are associated with 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 alcohol for me um, that you think become normal that it's okay to behave in a certain way and, 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 and that's okay and to say sorry and that's okay uh, with behaviour and thinking along those lines. Um, <clears throat> there'd be no, I, I would think nothing of uh, Friday night enjoying a drink and that would continue all weekend. Um, and, uh, and I live that life, that was, that was my conditioning, that was the work environment I was with, that was the circle of friends I was with, um, uh, and, and, and that's how I viewed and thought life. Um, you know, that's what the weekend was for, you, you, you vert this, you're inside, all the, the cliches that go with it, but it started to overtake. Um, my, my problem problem thinking was that that would uh, lead to me not understanding when to stop, when to stop drinking uh, and it would overtake me and consume me for two or three days at a time uh, and I'd go and lose myself in that world, um, come out of it, um, be very apologetic, the, the standard conditioning with that. Um, Oh shit! What have I done? You look at your phone, the text messages, or things that you've sent in that 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 stupor and that, that. and and sorry, being uh, the 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 brush to paint over all that bullshit and all that crap. Um, so that was my little sheep bobbing along in that world. <clears throat> thinking that well this is it this is this is what I do this is this is my life you know this is this is how it is um, and then uh, I've known Helen since I was 12 13 years of age um, she pinched my paper hand off me and I've, I've had it for it ever since hence <laughs> the debt has carried on till now um, but no uh, and and would always would always bump into each other and, and say hello, pleasantries, chat and talk. Um, and that was throughout out, out, mm -hmm. the, out our lives really, all that point, up to that point. 
And there was one occasion that we bumped into each other and Helen was with her mum and said hello. And I naturally stopped to talk. And it was hello and walked on. Uh, Helen walks on and I'm thinking, what's the matter with her? What have I done? What have I said? You know, so I'm not that good on the, the phones and the computers and all that. So I, I then get myself into the Facebook world and, and hunt Helen down um, and find you and make contact. And I, I then realised that um, your nan uh, was ill in hospital and Helen was on her way with her mum to visit her nan and didn't have time. And so I wasn't being rude. No, no. <laughs> just, just, just by thinking. Um, so we, we then, after all this time, and this was three and a half years ago, wasn't it? After all this time, we strike up a conversation which revolves around me asking you out for a date, uh, which, you know, you say, well, have you just asked me out on a date after all this time, sort of thing. So, so the romance started properly, sort of thing, blossomed, um, and Helen took on board this guy that uh, liked to drink. Um, it wasn't every day. It wasn't. I couldn't get out of bed without having a drink. But it was. It was. Um, it was a big part of social life, as, as no doubt it is with a lot of people. Um, <coughs> but. I would tend to, even then, even throughout the course of our relationship, uh, I, I used the term, once my throat opened up and it was going down well, I would disappear or make excuses to still disappear and go and visit my mistress, which was alcohol, and enjoy that relationship instead of enjoying our relationship, um, to which Helen um, tolerated for quite some time really uh, the blips that I used to create um, and I make no bones about every every single time it was my choice my responsibility there is no blame apportioned anywhere and I take full responsibility for every time I disappeared, I, I chose to do that, that's fact, there is no, no, well, my mate says just pop in for one and, and there was this glass of lager and I had that and then there was this other glass of lager and I had that and oh the time carried on, I was having such a good time and it just happened, bullshit, I'm responsible for every one of those moments, everyone, and it reached a point, um, it was my 50th birthday last May, um, and as you can expect, it's a milestone birthday, so let's celebrate. To which I celebrated in excess with your friends, you. Um, and the upshot of that was um, I became abusive towards Helen and her friends. Um, I was vile. I was nasty. Um, and aside to my character, which was, was horrible, came forward through alcohol, no excuses, it was me. And, and Helen decided that that's it, I've had enough. Um, the consequences of my action then, we was planning on um, getting married, moving in together, going on holiday and Helen as brave as she is now I've had enough cancelled the lot sort yourself out we're done so that's 12 months it's 13 months ago so I'm now back at home lost everything through my bad decisions So now I'm, I'm, I need to do something because I'm now thinking I've had enough.
I've had enough of this. What I've been doing for 30 plus years isn't the normal, isn't acceptable. I've got something precious. I've got something wonderful that I want to keep. That was my thinking 13 months ago. Now, it's important to understand like I understand that because 13 months ago I've got, I've got something precious that I want to keep is what I was thinking so I could do something about this and I remember phoning you up on I think a Monday a couple of weeks into our separation and I was like a machine gun Helen, <clears throat> I'm going on this uh, course to uh, understand my drinking. Uh, I've spoke to my son and told him uh, what, what uh, a prat his dad is uh, and what he's done and that he's abusive and that the relationship's been destroyed because of his drinking. I've said that to my son. My son's uh, 21 years old. I've said that to him. Uh, uh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do... And it's like a machine gun conversation. And looking, thinking about that, that at a later point, highlighted something else to me, which I'll, I'll talk about in a bit. But I'm there, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Okay, okay. So I go to this, these meetings and I start... Um, I start hearing, I'm with, I'm with people now um, in an addictive group and it's drugs and alcohol uh, and I'm hearing, I'm hearing about uh, everybody's past and I know I'm, I'm talking about it but I'm trying to give you an insight into me, who I am and where I've come from but at this meeting as we went round the room I'm hearing nightmare, nightmare Nightmare, 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 nightmare. And I'm thinking, by the time it gets to me, I want to go and have a drink. I'm, I'm, this is really, this is like, this is, you know. And I think, I've got a problem. Well, she, she's lost her three kids, and a house, and, 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 and all that, and he's lost his job, and his kids, and, 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 and you know, my relationship's gone tits up, but what's, you know. And, but Hi. I come back to the meeting the following week. One or two people are there that I recognise, and there are some new people. And the facilitator starts opening the meeting up, and we're talking. Uh, and then it goes round again. You know. I, Hello, you know, how are you? Oh, thank you. Oh, good. Good to good see good you. you. Um, and it starts again. People, people reliving their individual nightmares and I'm thinking this I'm thinking mm, this isn't really uh, I know I've got some sort of trigger point and you know was I was I as a as a three year old fed alcohol so that this little demon's grown up with me and at some point this demon goes drink 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 and off I go and destroy myself There's, but this isn't helping me I'm hearing nightmare after nightmare and I've got my own nightmare, really, but, you know, I need to do something to, to progress because I've got this wonderful person I've got to win back. I've got to win back. Okay? So, this, this, this group goes on for a couple of, couple of weeks, and then we, we, we start talking a bit again, and you feel that one of the, the groups there can help you understand what trauma you've been, I've put you through. Uh, so, uh, one night of the week, I'm going to this group, and Helen sits outside reading a book. And then another night of the week, Helen goes to this group, and I sit outside reading a book. So, we're starting to build um, uh, small, small bricks in our relationship back together. And, the group that I'm in uh, is suddenly 
uh, coming to an end, and the guy says, well, we, we, we're, this will be the last one. However, Lee, there's, there's this other group going, and I think you'd be really good at, you know, it'd really be helpful for you. And I'm thinking, mm, okay, well, I'll take anything, because I'm, I'm like a sponge soaking up uh, my need, need to change and be a better person. I think I'm a better person. Um, and this group, uh, this, this second course, is Intuitive Recovery. And it's, it's, it's a four-week course uh, that um, is, run, was, is run by a guy called Mark Spooner. Uh, and this is where, day one, when I go to the first course, I meet him. And you know when you have that feeling that you meet somebody and they've got an aura about them and there you think there's a connection and you think there's something about this person that's that's and I, I love the word magical there's something about this and I can say about you boom as soon as you meet somebody you connect and it's like <laughs> wow who is this person and, and that's how I felt about you when I first met you and he was the same and, and this this course didn't care wasn't interested about your nightmare and, and reliving all that pain and misery and your past and all that crap. It was about understanding. You're thinking. You're thinking about certain things. You're thinking about addiction. And there, there's nothing wrong with you. You just made bad choices. So, goes along on this course. And I'm, I'm now in a place where after the second one, I've found you during the work, and I've gone, I've made the bold statement, Helen, I'll never drink again. I've got this sussed. I'm on it. This, this, this guy and this cause, switch me on, boom, loving it. Truth. So, this course goes on. Our relationship starts to, to build and blossom again. Mm -hmm. um, my good little ship Lee is, is sunshine now, sailing along, and I'm thinking, you've got this, I'm not drinking. I feel I'm in control, I'm there. Got her back. We're, we're kind of like, okay, mm -hmm. making plans again. So here we go. All right. <laughs> you know what you did, don't you? <laughs> it's coming up to uh, December, beginning of December. The plans are in place. Uh, wedding, honeymoon, moving back in together, future. And we're talking to friends and family and... Mm, there's a few groans, and mm, don't trust him, mm, leopard will never change his spots, and all this. And so I'm thinking, don't care, I love her, I've got her, we're doing this, I'm not drinking, back on track, boom. <clears throat> First week of December, now I know, my, my, my head's like a, you know the snow domes that you get, the little snow globes, you shake them up, and it's all pretty snow. My head's like that. Call it a washing machine effect. You know, you can't think straight, you can't see clearly. My head's like this. I'm thinking, oh, oh, moving in, getting married. Blah, blah, blah. Don't want this, don't need this. Oh. Proudly proclaim on the Wednesday morning. Mm. I've had it. enough of this. No, love you. Good enough. I think you actually said that you'd never looked at it. Yeah. Out it all comes. Out it all comes. Turns round, walks out the house, phones my son up. I was, this is like 7.30 in the morning. Hi son, uh, it's dad, yeah, yeah, I've just told Ellen, the wedding's up, everything's up, so I'm going, you know, to garbage. You all right, dad? Uh, oh, yeah, everything's all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, gotta go. Uh, put the phones down. 
my mind, snow globing, 100 mile an hour, washing machine, whatever you want to call it, and I'm, I'm adamant, make the right decision, don't need it, blah, 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 blah. All hell breaks loose, as you can imagine. My name's Mud. A bit worse than that. <laughs> um, so, what do I do? Sorry, sorry, minute. Now in the right place. Yeah. The right it's, place. It's not just talking, you know. Hey, all right. Me, you know, goofing doors, tried suicide. Am I in the right kind of place yes. to talk about? Yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm late at work. That's absolutely fantastic. Come and join So I'm out of breath. I've been up now. I couldn't find you. Oh. <laughs> I'm ashamed. I think you befriended me Facebook. Probably. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's okay. lovely to see you. So, uh, yeah, all hell broke loose. I'm making bad decisions again. And uh, right. So, my conditioning. What do you do now, then, Lee? You've got what you want. I'm back at my brother's house. My house. My brother's house. Yeah. Drink, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that, that, that solves it. You know, black, snow globe, washing machine, whatever. Go have a few beers. So, Thursday, go for a drink. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, wake up at home. And I'm lying there thinking, what the heck have you done? What have you done? What have you done? And I think we had a, a telephone conversation, uh, which wasn't a good conversation, as you can imagine. Um, and that's it. We're done. Uh, I think you, you said the words that uh, you've got what you want. Go and celebrate. Go and kill yourself. Go and drown yourself in alcohol. F off. Do that. That's it. You've, you've won. Off you go. So, I'm then thinking, well, yeah, you've got what you want. You've got no responsibility. Everything's back to your little playing world, back to your, your, my little world. Little ship sailing along. There you go, Lee. Go and do what you want now. You know, work. Who cares about work? What you got to go to work for? None of that matters. You can just go and do what you want. You know, and something in here said, is it really what you want? And because I'd had a period of, of abstinence, this voice inside here that was, just popped that question into my brain. Really, what do you want? See what you want to do. You've had 30, 30 odd years of that. Is it really what you want? Hmm. Yeah, but this is this this has never happened before, this thought. Uh, so Monday, go to work, come home. Hmm. Not drinking, I've got a bed, I think. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not drinking. I'm not. I've got what I want, but I'm not doing what I want. You don't, you don't really want to do this, do you? So I then start thinking. Hmm. Who made an impact? Who was there? Who did I think think helped me? Mark Spooner. So I ring. Still got his number. Ring him. Ring him again. Uh, ring him again. Uh, little did I know that Helen had already spoke to him um, and said what the situation was that I've lost Lee. He's gone. He's 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 he's, he's jumped overboard. Uh, and then a Monday night, I'm walking home from work, and my phone goes, and it's this Mark Spooner. And I go, hello, Mark. And he goes, all right, Lee, because uh, I understand you're fucked up. Uh, what do you want? You've been phoning me. 
Sorry. Yeah, well, you know, I'll, I'll, are you on your way to the pub? Are you planning to use? And he was quite um, aggressive and, and, and force, forthright, I would say, with me about what I was planning to do, drink, whatever. Um, and I said, no, Mark, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested, and, and I'm not interested, so I'm just not interested. And we had a little chat for a few minutes, and he said, what are you doing Saturday night? It's nothing. And he said, well, I go to this group uh, at this St. Barnabas Church called Jat, just a thought. He said, uh, come along, might be of interest. So, there I am, okay, yeah, give anything a try. <coughs> and now I'm in that position where I was six months ago, where I can win it back. I can do this, I can change, I can get it back. I need to soak up all this stuff to, to get me back in track and win it back. So I go along to this meeting, uh, and I'm a nervous wreck. I'm in a bad place, my mind's a mess, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm physically shaking, uh, I'm not in a good place at all. Meets Mark and, and, and I walks into the, the, the foyer, Mark shakes my hand right there, how you doing, good. And then he leaves me, sat with three, three women and I'm sat next to this beautiful lady and I go, I'm late, blah, blah, blah. well there's a guest speaker here tonight. To which Deborah turns around and goes, uh, hi I'm Deborah. Um, oh that must be me then. And, 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 and I'm like, oh my god, oh, what have I said? You know, and, I'm, and then I meet uh, your, your Lucy, and Bex. Lucy and Bex um, and my thinking is so bad that the Christmas tree, because it's December in the church, you can imagine a big, beautiful Christmas tree. And I see Mark, and I go, Mark, Mark, can we have a, do a selfie? Do a selfie of us by the tree, so I can send it to Helen, so she knows I'm here. <laughs> and Mark looks at me and he goes, yeah, I can do that, Lee, but don't you think by doing that, you're invading Helen's space. You're, you're imposing on Helen. And, and if she loves you and knows that you're here, isn't that enough? You know, you trying to prove that you're here is just imposing on Helen. Okay. And my heart sings, I'm thinking, that's not the answer, because I want Helen to know, I want Helen to know, I want her to know I'm here, because I'm changing, I'm going to do this. <laughs> Shit. So I goes up to this meeting, and I meet one of the ladies that I was at the intuitive recovery group with, called Tamara, beautiful lady. We sit down, the room's packed. This wonderful lady gets up and starts talking. And she's talking about uh, thinking, thoughts and the three principles and I'm, I'm this little snow globe 100 miles an hour and two things connect two things connect that, that, that Deborah's talking about throughout this two hour meeting and one is the aircraft out of control uh, and the pilot hands on the controls, I've got, to, I've got to save the plane, I've got to save the plane. And uh, the, the control tower is saying, just let go, the plane will automatically get to default settings and right itself. But I've got to control the plane, I've got to save it, I've got to make this okay. And, and I'm sat there thinking, that's me with Helen. I've got to, I've got to win it back. I've got to win a heart, I've got to do this, I can do this. Was the control tower, just let go, it will 
it, if everything, if it's meant to be and it's going to work out fine, it will. You've got to let go. It's on there. Oh. That means something to me, that does. And then the description about um, the three principles being the, the, the old cinema projector. Uh, you've got the power of the electricity feeding the, 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 cine, the, the, the two reels and, and what's projected is, 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 is that's how you see life. It, it's, it's, it's an inside out scenario instead of life coming at you and, and, it, and it, it happens to me, it's, it's inside out and I'm thinking, this is all new. This, you know, mm. But what, what, what struck with me then was the film reels and, and the, your thinking are the film reels and the film that you're seeing in life is for you to change. You change, you change that reel. And my thinking was, I've got to win Helen back, got to win Helen back, got to win Helen back. And, uh, change the bloody film. Stop beating yourself up. Stop trying to, trying to please. Change the <coughs> film. So, so that kind of like, for a first introduction into the principles, those two things, mm, okay. And pretty much we start to talk uh, again, um, and pretty much the beginning of January, I kept saying, I keep changing the reel, I keep having these crap thoughts, and I'm changing the film, I'm changing the film, and it says going to these two, oh, you feel sad about, change the film, change the film. And I was like a bit of a broken record about that. <laughs> but the realisation was my thoughts. It, uh, I, the, the, the retreat was, was discussed at that first meeting, wasn't it? And, and, I'm, uh, and me then, I'm this sponge again. I want this information. I, I, I want this. I want to I wanna change. And, and this is the key. And, and, and I, can, I can win Helen back again. Helen back, that's where we were, wasn't it? Kept going to hell. Um, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> so I start attending these Just a Thought meetings to understand, and because they're regular, and it's not about, it wasn't about peeling back the scab and reliving the pain of the past over and over again. It was okay, that's the past. You can't change the past. So the only person who's going to get upset about the bad memories is me. Because I'm thinking about them. And what's worse, I'm thinking about the thought of them. Of a memory, of a memory. Because it's not happening, it happened then. And then I'm thinking about that memory. And then I'm thinking about, thinking about that memory. And it's like, you're the only one getting upset because it's not happening, it's, it's the past. So, I'm going on this retreat, and there I am again. Helen, I'm going on this retreat. Good, good, but I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm, gonna, I'm on this retreat, I'm going to do this retreat. And, and, and I wanted to, and here I was again, trying to force the relationship. And, and, and what did your grounded, wise words every time? We haven't even been on the retreat yet. <laughs> Breathe, space, time. Yeah. Every time I tried to push to get close because I wanted to control. I think it was space time here. Yeah. Space time here. Do the bloody retreat. <laughs> Talk to me after you've done the bloody retreat. So I goes on the retreat and there I am thinking, mm, now what am I going into? <laughs> Cult. I'm going to be, you know, dancing around fires at night, all naked. Yes. <laughs> so, so I went on this, this retreat, uh, and wow, doesn't even begin to to describe what I experienced on that first retreat, um, and.
my insight, for me, and the key that unlocked me, was I didn't love myself. Complex that. Mm -hmm. I didn't love myself. And on that retreat, that was my realisation. And what I thought about me all those years was people pleasing. When I didn't get the reaction from people I was trying to please, my, my comfort blanket was alcohol. Go and stick your head in a glass. Control. I thought I needed Helen, to be happy. And all along, everything I need is right here. For me to be happy is right here. I don't need anything. It's here. The sun, my sunshine, shines in me all the time, 24 seven. Even when it gets cloudy, and I'm having shit thoughts, that sunshine is there. My default setting, just like everybody in this room, is you're okay. Your sunshine is inside you. You may not think that now, and you may be thinking what a load of rubbish, but I can assure you, categorically, unquestionably, you're okay. Your default setting is you're okay, no matter what's going on, no matter what. And that realisation for me, that I am okay, I don't need things to make me happy, and by not having those things, I look out there to substitute that happiness. I'm okay, I'm okay. The moment I realised that, the moment I took the control off what I thought was what I needed in a relationship, I found peace. I found peace within myself. And, and Deborah discussed unconditional love. And I'm... I, For me, unconditional love. What's that all about? What's unconditional love? What? No conditions? Yes, you prat. Unconditional. <laughs> mm. well, that's, 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 that's a different concept, isn't it? What's, you know, what's, what's that about? And then exploring that, that I can love Helen unconditionally. What she thinks and does with that is her business. I love her unconditionally. I don't want anything back in return. I love Helen. There you go. The moment you put conditions on, the moment you spiral away from that, you take away where you are, who you are, because it then becomes something makes you happy, not you've already got it. And there is absolutely nothing, nothing wrong with experiencing your emotions, sadness, upset, all the, all the, all the array of human experience, the emotions that go with it. I, I realised that by suppressing sadness, by suppressing anger, by feeling uncomfortable with those emotions and reaching outside to dull those emotions, it was all wrong, all wrong thoughts, all bad thinking. It's okay, 
once you realise you're okay, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to experience that, but don't live it, don't become a victim to that thought, let that thought come in that you're, you're feeling sad, sit with it, experience it, recognise it, once you do that, you can let it go, you let it pass, and you return back to your default settings. And that, that retreat, for me, changed my life. We you were visibly a different person. My whole mindset my whole un understanding that it is just thought totally changed me, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Totally. I, I, the power, the empowerment that I'm the thinker of my thoughts and that it's my choice. I choose to be happy and that it's my reality through my thinking, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I nearly cried myself. It's, it's, it's. And, and, and I've continued and we've continued and grown um, through that. I, 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 I even I went on a second retreat. Um, yes, came back the Loved it. <laughs> um, Once, once, once you click into understanding your thoughts, and yes, you know, they're powerful, they're real. The conversations I've had since that first retreat and, re and understanding, when you listen to people talk, and you actually sit with them and, 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 and listen to what's being said, start to see what, what nonsense and rubbish comes out without, because people are talking and not thinking about what they're talking and it's garbage, a lot of it. And when, when, you, when, when you stop and, 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 and if I'm doing that now and that's what you're thinking, that's your thoughts. That's none of my business. But the power, the power of your thought, and, and when, when, when you talk to people, I went through the phase of, my God, this is wonderful, this is brilliant, and, and you've got to get into this, you've got to listen to this, this will change your life, this is brilliant, it's changed my life, you've got, no, 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 it's your thinking, it's your thinking, it's, you're talking crap, it's your thinking, it's just thought, it's just thought, oh, it's raining now, but it's still sunny on the end. Ooh. And then, and then you, get the, you get the response of, well, that's all well and good, you, you know, you're, you've got this insight and this understanding and you know about the three principles and, and whatever they are and, and you're thinking and it's just a thought, but my life's terrible, it's real! <laughs> Not yours, mine! <laughs> okay, so, and it's just the same, it's just, just our thinking. Uh, and I love it and it's, it's, it's amazing to play with that. Isn't it? <laughs> Play with your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And any questions? <laughs> any, shall, any? We grab, shall we grab a coffee and let anybody get any? If anybody wants a drink or anything like that, what time are we at? If we have anybody wants to get a drink or some cakes, and I've got to bring a knife for the cake, but, but there is cake there, so if you have a bite, pass it on. <laughs> My kind of cake. Yeah, oh. Love it. <laughs> and then we'll come back. And basically, what you've heard from Lee is the impact of misunderstanding, the changes that this, and how it can impact. 
and uh, you kind of heard a little bit of Lee's background of what that was and the principles can change your life in these ways it doesn't you don't have to have your problem doesn't have to necessarily be alcohol it doesn't matter I, I have heard about people and seen people and spoken to people and watched these changes happen no matter what you think your problem is no matter what it is that you think in your life is going on or whatever and this understanding there is nothing there's a whole group of people now that are teaching the principles to world leaders because they are um, talking about this as the one solution to um, world hunger. They're talking about it as the solution to... There is no problem in this world that this understanding can't change, can't sort out. Because the reason that we get into the difficulties is because we do not understand how our reality is created. And when we begin to understand how our reality is created, things change, and things change hugely. Relationships heal, um, people's addictions clear up overnight. Things change massively and very, very quickly when we get an insight and when we see this. So we're talking about something really, it's really simple and it is really, really powerful. And, um, Really grateful for you for sharing your experiences and sharing your <laughs> your journey. And can I thinking. can I just just add that yeah. um, my journey with the three principles just a thought is as is as recently as December just gone, and uh, we're now involved in we we now facilitate a group in Birmingham, and and just to reiterate what Deborah said. The people that, that come to the group, just like yourselves, it's it's from any background. Um, mine, okay, uh, was alcohol, but there are people with relationship issues, with family issues, and and it's it's from anywhere that this this understanding uh, can point you to the door. You walk through it into your own happiness, and it's it's powerful stuff. Got one question you don't want. So I turned up late, it's a long story. So is everybody here, are they fairly new? Because this is my first time, I'm a there virgin some, meeting person, you know. Has this been going on a while? Are, are the new people here, like myself? Or there are, are you... brand new people here who have come new this the first time, yeah. So if we grab a cup of tea or some, grab whatever you want, then we'll get that. Then I will we'll go over what the principles are, we'll talk right. about that. And because I come in late, it's Helen, are you Helen? Yeah. It's Rock, so who's Helen? What? So I missed the beginning. I'm Helen, actually. Right. So, so, was that, well, you, can, you explain your connection, so obviously I didn't, I wasn't here at the beginning. So. Well, have the, have, the, have the break, and I'll have a chat with right. you in, 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 yeah. the, in, the, in the break, if you want. Anybody wants to give me an update? Hello. Oh, fabulous. Lots of meat Is there only two weeks? <laughs> it's, it's been a roller coaster. The only, the only 
this way. I don't know what your situation is today, but I'm glad we've got the new ones now all the way in. Uh, we just in the last 12 months. So I've, I've, you know, I've, I've had, you know, my people ask me to be in my mind, you know, but I'm not going to give up. So yeah, so I thought I'd come along, I saw uh, Come along, Stosha. How it come about? There's somebody that I may have to meet who's from the world. They were from the world. They started chatting. They sent me a note, and she said, "Oh, so and so is a friend of hers." So she sent me the link, and I saw it on Facebook. So yeah, so it's, it's this a mix with them. I mean, it's, it's not all magic, but there's you know, some things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
I didn't read until I never read books. And I started the fellowship. I started the fellowship about three years ago. And on holiday, I'd read about two hundred, about a hundred pages. That was it. And then all of a sudden, I started understanding myself. And instead of watching crappy films on telly, I picked a book up and I made and I read the fellowship. Then I went on to the two towers, and then. Um, I think after the first, second retreat, I finished Return of the King. Did you? Yeah. Oh, wow. In a charity shop, um, I found The Hobbit. So then I read The Hobbit. Yes. Oh, is and it then, great? Oh, my God. Oh, it's so I, I, lovely. I, I want to read them again. But then, when I took, uh, when I went to the charity shop again, they had the, and you know you think everything's meant to happen. Is it the Silmarillion? One yes. of the, the, the very earlier book yeah. that was there, so I bought that. So I'm finishing the book I'm on now, and then I'm going to go on to the Silver Then I'm going to go back to the fellowship. So I, it was so engrossing, it just oh, the, oh, takes you are. out. You really, the thing is, is, I find that you really need to designate like a good half a day or something to sit down yeah. and read. It's not one of those books that you can pick up and put down. No, no, because you, you don't want to leave them, whoever it is, no. wherever they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Brilliant. Yeah, that, oh, I just love it. And the Hobbit, I was, I think I spent like days, solid days, just reading through the Hobbit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, the Order of the Rings and then doing going to the Hobbit. I, I, I found the Hobbit, yeah, more more of a, a fairy tale type, yeah. even though it's not. Yes. It's, it's the grounding yes. for all that lot. Yeah, exactly. You know? But it is, it is that thing, and especially like, you're really, it's so different to film as well. Because you read the Hobbit, and I remember distinctly one bit where they're um, walking through the walking through the woods, and the elves are in the trees. Yeah. And they disappear. Yeah. Drinking, yeah. Singing, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Great to see you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and now we come to meet the lovely man. Absolutely. You can see why my journey's worth going on, can't you? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Not controlling. <laughs> I think you would all agree that that was absolutely beautiful for me and I'd really like to say a big thank you. I know that that was difficult for Helen and thank you very, very much for sharing some of your innermost stuff. That is really beautiful for me. So, I know tonight there are some new people in the room, so <clears throat> it might be helpful if we kind of talk a little bit maybe about the principles and what the principles actually are, maybe? <laughs> This, this understanding that we're pointing to is a very, very simple understanding of your mind, okay? And because we're talking about something formless, because we're talking about, you know, like our mind is a little bit, we can't, you can't kind of put it in a wheelbarrow, can you can't kind of get hold of it, so we're talking about something that's um, formless. So sometimes or most of the time, words are very, very inadequate when we're trying to describe this. So please bear with us when we're talking. But this is absolutely a conversation, as you can see from Lee and Helen's story. And there are, Lee and Helen are not alone. There are lots and lots of amazing stories. And if you look up the three principles, if you go online and look into it and find out about it, it has, the, the things that there were two, um, uh, what were they called, like towns that Ameri in America that had got the highest crime rates of places in America. And they started to teach the people who lived in these towns, they started to, they sent people in, started to teach the principles to these people, and the crime rate just stopped. These places had virtually no crime in these two towns that had the highest crime rates. So this understanding is extremely powerful. But it is something like, like when Lee was talking earlier and he was talking about that, he kind of came along and sort of heard it, whatever, and then he had this moment, he just had this, oh my goodness moment, he just saw something. And I know Julie's having a little chuckle there, because I know Julie has had a couple of those moments too. Oh my God! <laughs> is that what it was? And yeah. we can kind of hear this, but it's like, almost the way that I would describe it is when our heart starts to hear it, something massive shifts. And so it's a conversation worth staying in. You know, not necessarily, I would, these meetings are regularly, fortnightly, usually in this room. I put it on Facebook, the lovely Ian puts it on North Devon Friends. If anybody wants to join North Devon Friends, it's on there. I try and do this fortnightly as much as I possibly can. Um, but there are stuff online, there's other stuff. This isn't, and if what, if what I'm saying doesn't resonate with you, Please don't throw away the principles. Just find someone else who talks about it in a way that you will understand. Because this is life-changing and really powerful stuff. And it is worth hearing about or at least giving it a try. So, um, the principles are mind, thought and consciousness. So they are just words that we are putting on something that is, as I say, formless, difficult to kind of get... To try and get hold of it, it's a bit like trying to grab a wet fish. It kind of, as soon as you think you get it, it kind of slips away again, and it's not exactly that, it's not quite that. But we're looking at a deeper spiritual understanding of our mind. Because we are human, we are, I am extremely human, I have a very human existence. I have a son at the moment who's broken his toe, and a daughter who's off work with some problems. You know, very, very human, but we also have a deeper spiritual side. And we ignore these two elements of ourselves at our peril. If we kind of believe that we are just humans and we never take into account that we have a spiritual side, then we get into trouble. 
If we kind of try and be out in the world and just be spiritual and ignore the fact that we're human, we get into trouble. Because we are both of these things. And it's not exactly about balancing them, but it is learning to understand, to truly understand who we are. At the moment, I'm doing something, going out there quite a lot, and talk, I don't know if any of you are my friends on Facebook, friends, but I'm doing something called Dare to Be You. And Dare to Be You, for me, um, encapsulates those two things. It's the fact that we are these spiritual beings, but we are also very, very human. We do live in this world. We do want, you know, I like earning money. I like being out. I like doing things. I like going out with my friends. I don't know whether I like skydiving yet, but I'm about to find out. You know, I like doing things. I like being in the world. I like creating. I like doing that. And you know, we have that human side, and to ignore the fact that we like doing human things, there's things we like, things we don't like, we like eating out, whatever. You know, if we try and just be this perfect, just this spiritual being who's all holier than thou and better than the next person, we just get ourselves into trouble in that way. So it's not, we're not looking at that at all, we're looking at being very human and enjoying your life, but seeing if we connect to this place within ourselves, if we see this. My experience has been that finding this out about myself and having this realisation that I have this deeper spiritual part of me, it's meant that my humanness is much more fun and I do it better and people around me like it better and I get on really well in the world from knowing though that and then just being human. So. I don't know, do you, do you want to do your flip chart thing? Because these, this will be the only time that these people probably, because I have never done that like that. Do you want, what, does that make sense to you? What is, you can't remember. I really excited Shall we try? Just a thought. Yeah, just a thought. You haven't got them on your phone, have you? I think I probably have on the messenger. It's what was, what if, and... See, I've never seen, this is how the Jack Club um, which is also, you can find Jack, J-A-T, on, club, on Facebook as well. So the Jack Club, this is the way that they Jack talk Club about... C-I. C, yeah. C-I-C. C -I -C. So this is how, um, when you go to a Jack Club meeting, if you were ever in Birmingham or around that area, the, they, this was, would, would be the way that they would speak about the principles and they do something kind of flip chart. And as Lee and Helen are here, Helen, do you want to take over and do this with Lee? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not coming up, but you can see it's small there. Never mind. Oh, you it. It. Would it be enough to remind you? Can everybody see the flip chart? Yes. Is everybody a little bit cooler now with the windows open? It did get a little bit warmer here, didn't it? Sorry. Are we any good? I have no idea what you're going to do. No. No. Don't worry, we'll wing it. It's fine. Sorry, Tina, no flip chart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, 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 it starts um, understanding that the reality, the only reality, is right now. What's, what's real to each and every one of us is this moment um, and, and the principles talk a lot of living in the moment and the only moment is now. Uh, is, is, and that's real is now. What, what happened five minutes ago eating cake, biscuits is a memory. It's all memory. You can't change that. You can't go back to it. Um, and what you're thinking about doing after this meeting is all thought, all what if. Um, and and you can't, can't worry about it. yeah you, it and and, and you, you you get you get caught up in your password. <laughs> Everybody knows it now. <laughs> we can all get, we can all get onto Helen's phone. Accept. Yeah. 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 Just wing it, Liz. Yeah. Just wing it. Um. And 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 the. The understanding is um, we are not our thoughts, we're the thinkers of our thoughts. Now, now that can be a bit of a boom moment when, when, when you, you explore that because we're the thinkers of our thoughts. 
our thoughts are coming through us. Uh, I think. I think Fifty to seventy thousand. Yeah, there's thousands and thousands of thoughts a day we're having coming through, and it's like the scenario that <clears throat> you sat on your city, you got your front door behind you, your back door in front of you, both open, and there's a stream, a constant stream of thoughts coming through. Thought, 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 thought. Now for me, these thoughts would be whizzing through throughout the course of the day and the, the alcohol thought, boom, there it is. And it's like, ah, I'll play with that one, invite it, sit down next to me. There it is, sat on the settee. And then what happens? Hmm, alcohol. That thought brings his mates excess. Uh, self-destruction, next thing you know, they've wrecked the house. Because you've entertained that thought and, and, and understanding this was, was when I had the thought of going for a drink, it was that moment that I was happy, 